Hello everyone, and welcome to another installment of my WordPress tutorials. Today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I have prepared a fresh WordPress installation on my server, so I can show some uh, additional things with plugins. So uh, this WordPress installation doesn't have anything configured. The server side, no snippets, uh, nothing is configured. So don't be actually uh, like uh, don't start wondering about why there is like a different IP address or many things are missing here because it's basically is done because I wanted to show you a fresh install with only plugins without any uh, anything messing up with the configuration without any mess that is in the snippets that can actually interact with the plugins. We have only our WordPress and only our plugins here, so nothing in the background. All right, so first thing, let's actually log into to the website. Right, so here we are. As you can see, I basically dismissed everything from the plugins. There is nothing here. So let's go to add new plugin. The first thing that is actually recommended is to install two factory authentication. It's a well common practice used by many. So let's do that. I'm going to use Mini Orange's Google Authenticator. Let's activate. Let's choose all users. Let's see, maybe like this. Should user be given a grace period or should they be directly enforced for 2FA setup? Directly enforced. What else do we have here? Okay, so Google Authenticator. Now we need to scan the barcode. See then authenticator. Okay, so basically, what you need to do, I've downloaded an app called Google Authenticator. And after scanning this QR code, you are given an additional code that you need to actually input here for 2FA. And that's it. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. 
I'm gonna squeeze it a little bit. So I'm gonna dismiss that. So we got our uh, Google Authenticator here. What do we have? Let's check notifications. If you want to get not uh, notifications over email, please enter the email address here. So you can, of course, enter the email address. Users to FA status. So here's the username. Here's the here's the email address. Some kind of bogus email address that I used. the account to factory let's see what we got here reports add-ons additional add-ons so basically I'm using this let's see what do we have here in settings Enable to FA for users. On the fly to FA configuration. So just basic stuff. And we have here, of course, the two factory and the authentication which looks like something like this, of course. You don't need to go through all of this if you have done the setup like I did in the beginning. Oh well, let's just now log out out of the system. Now, let's Again, log into the system, to the website, and here we are asked to give our code from the phone again. So I'm just opening my app, Google Authenticator app on my phone right now. I'm going to input the code. And there we go. So basically, it's very easy to set up. So mini orange two factory authentication. Let's, let's check the upgrade status. What do we have here? We have the basic. We have the basic. Enterprise premium light. I think the free one is just enough. Unless you want to pay some cash and have some additional features. Okay, so basically this is this is two factory authentication. Easy to set up, nothing special here. Just some basic settings here as well. Custom login forms. Some premium features. Okay, so let's go to the plugins once again. Since we have this two factory authentication setup, now we should actually look for our brute force protection, which is going to be loginizer. We're going to search for loginizer. There we have loginizer. As you can see, it says here plugin which helps you fight against brute force attacks. Okay, so let's install this. So I'm just reminding that uh, we are now working only on WordPress with plugins without any additional config configuration or maintenance, without any changes in the config files, without any snippets just WordPress and plugins. 
Okay, so we've got the loginizer here. Let's go to the settings. Gonna shut this off. Okay, so this is like a basic thing. IP address of the server, IP address from where I'm now currently uh, logged in. So the computer that I'm using at the moment to log in from. And here we can check in the file permissions, our file permissions for different WP um, directories. So we have WP admin includes wconfig.php, WP content. As you can see, the suggested uh, for WP config.php is 0444 and I have 0666. So we can fix that pretty easy. I will go to my server. Let's change the directory here. Okay, so this is basically everything that's here. And from what I see, it wants wp-config.php. Okay, so let's change chmod. And it wants to have 444. Okay, now let's actually check and everything seems fine. So uh, it seems of, of course it's quite important to check that up and check this out. So if you have loginizer use use this feature and check if your permissions are okay. Okay, but let's go to other things because uh, as you can see, Loganizer has few different options. It has brute force, it has passwordless, it has two-factor authentication, recapture. Uh, so it has um, different things, but those things are unfortunately only for premium users. Upgrade to Pro if you want to use that. The same goes to factory for factory, to factory authentication, recapture, security settings. Yeah, so unfortunately everything here is basically pro. But it doesn't concern us, we are only concerned with the concerned with the brute force. I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. Okay, so basically what do we have here? We have failed login attempts. The logs. So here I'm gonna have all the failed logins. That happened uh, during um, the work of your WordPress website. If uh, somebody's gonna try to log in a couple of times, it's gonna and it's gonna be he's gonna be banned, or he won't log in. Then all of this stuff is gonna be recorded here. So you can even export a CSV fi file, which is really nice. Uh, you can blacklist selected IP addresses that are gonna appear here and probably there will be quite a lot of them at, in time. You can cl clear the logs, of course, or, or, or you can remove the from entry log. Some entries from here you can just remove from the logs. So as you can see, I don't have any uh, additional things here. Mm, so I have nothing to simulate to to show you how it's gonna look, but it's pretty straightforward. Nothing special here, to be honest. Uh, what we are concerned with is brute force settings. So we have here like max entries. So those max entries are the maximum amount of entries that user or admin 
has to actually um, until he blocks himself. So basically we are setting up max entries so three times we can input our password three times after three times we're gonna be blocked for 15 minutes and we have five tries here that are basically default on default is five tries you have five tries uh, so you can so it's basically multiply three multiply by five so it gives you 15 15 um, times that you will be able to input your password so this is quite high I wouldn't suggest leaving it at this I would actually change it to 2 so at this moment you will have 3 times 2 you have 6 tries 6 different uh, times that you will be able to try so uh, let's take it like uh, uh, first time I block myself for 15 minutes uh, then again 15 minutes again so 15 times 6 so that's the amount of minutes that I'm gonna be uh, timed out in total so the lower the lower number here the less amounts uh, in general during the period of 24 hours um, your user or you are gonna have so just bear in mind uh, I wouldn't suggest keeping this up uh, for a high uh, number uh, okay so we have like uh, ma a max lockout time it's uh, 15 minutes here so I'm gonna change that for one minute max try so I'm gonna have only set up to one Mac, max lockout times to uh, set it up for one as well why did I change this like that because I want to show you what you can actually do when you lock yourself out and extend lockout time 24 hours just change for like something like this like crazy amount of, of hours that you can be locked out if you actually lock yourself out uh, reset retries uh, 24 hours so this is how it's set here okay so uh, email notifications uh, after lockouts so after zero local lockouts uh, zero to the disable email notifications so basically when it's on zero you won't receive any email notifications if you entered your email address here in this in the settings in wordpress in general and in here in the loginizer you will receive email notifications basically almost every time that something happens somebody gets like uh, locked out or, or, or will be blacklisted or something so I'm leaving this on default because I haven't actually set up our email notifications but it's also an option if you want to set them up here you can input your email address okay I'm gonna save those settings so basically now if I uh, input uh, once my uh, my uh, password in a bad way, I'm gonna have one more chance, and then after that, I'm gonna be banned for this many hours. Okay, so what do we have here? Blacklist IPs. So basically, what you can do here, you can like uh, add an IP range. Uh, of IPs that you want to blacklist add a blacklist IP range so you can start with some some kind of IP address and then end with an IP address pretty easy you can also import a CSV file here with the IP ranges or, an exp or, or, or export everything that is set up here the same goes for whitelisting IP addresses. You can just white whitelist some IP address ranges that are important to you, so they won't be actually um, 
uh, checked by the, uh, the organizer. Uh, the same two options as well here. Uh, okay, what do we have here? Error messages, failed login attempts. The default one is this, you can change. Uh, blacklisted IP, you can change, of course, your IP has been blacklisted. You can change it to whatever you want, attempt, attempts left. It's gonna show how many attempts you have, do you still have local error. You have exceeded my maximum login registries. Please try after. Yeah, so basically you can customize all of those if you want. Okay, so that's Loginizer. Uh, pretty easy to set up, nothing special here, I guess. Uh, now let's actually do let's do some damage. So let's. Uh, Log out. We're gonna block ourselves out. It's a little bit password. Okay, zero attempts left. Please try after one one minute. So basically now we need to wait one minute so we can actually try again. So this is what the lockout means. If I had uh, the lockout set from 1 to 2, I would have another try after this one, after one minute I would have this try and when I, if I fucked it up I, had, I would have another minute. So that's the lockout. We're gonna wait a moment. I'm just gonna put some kind of all this password again here. Gibberish stuff. Let's check. Okay. Zero attempts left. And now I am basically blocked for like this amount of hours that I set up here. Okay, so I cannot do anything here. I blocked myself out. So what do what to do now? Well, pretty simple stuff. You need to unblock yourself, and to do that, you just need to deactivate the plugin that is responsible for blocking everything here so we need to do it from the server side of course so in this case I'm just gonna open my server I'm gonna, I'm just gonna clear everything here maybe change the directory well to do it you will need to actually install some additional stuff that is call, called WPCLI because without it you won't be able to um, actually use some uh, special commands to deactivate uh, the plugin. So I will use wget to download the wpcli. So this is the main command for the download. I'm just gonna wait a moment. So you will need to make this dot uh, par file execute executable and move it to slash uh, user slash local slash bin so that it can be run directly. Okay, so next thing we are gonna do we're gonna actually do chmod. We're gonna modify it a little bit. Now, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna move uh, WPCLI par to the slash user slash local bin WP. And the last thing that remains, we are gonna just check if everything's okay. So we're gonna do WP dash dash info. So there you go, everything is installed. The WPCLI is installed. It's a version 
271. If you want to run it, now you need to jump or change the directory to bar HTML WordPress. Of course, that's my main WordPress directory because I've uh, used Nginx and this is where I actually put my WordPress directory. I don't know where yours is. You just need to find it basically all the WP files in, in, and from here you can actually use the WP CLI. It won't work if I was in the HTML folder. I have to be in the WordPress folder so it sees everything here. Well, so let's just do a quick uh, maybe quick show. Let's say HTML. I'm gonna do now WP plugin plugin uh, deactivate or maybe list brand list so it lists all the plugins. And I'm gonna do plow wood. No, we cannot actually do it from here because as you can see it says the path is bogus here. It has to be from the WordPress path. So as I said we need to change the directory here to, to word, WordPress. Okay. And now I'm just gonna clear it up. I'm gonna do WP plugin list allow wood. And here we have our plugins with our versions and status of the plugins. So we got the loginizer and a mini orange two factory authentication. Both are active. So it's time to deactivate and deactivate loginizer. WP plugin deactivate allow and of course we need to copy the name of what we want to deactivate Plugin, sorry, I misspelled that. Okay, so the plugin has been deactivated now. I'm just gonna restart Nginx. I'm gonna restart here everything. Maybe just be sure I'm just gonna scratch everything from here. Okay, so it doesn't hold on to any cookies. And I'm now gonna enter and from here let's jump to WP admin. Okay, let's jump to to our Nope, and of course the authentication again, right? So I need to open my authenticator. This time it's gonna be something like this validation, and there we go. So this is how you can actually unblock yourself if you fuck yourself over with Loginizer or whatever, which would whichever plugin is mal malfunctioning on, on your WordPress website, you can easily turn it off or you can even uh, remove it just because uh, if I wanted to remove it I would just use um, WP plugin plugin uh, delete the, the name of the plugin and it would actually delete the, the plugin itself. 
It also works if you have some kind of problems with deleting plugins from here, of course. So as you can see, it's it's uh, the the organizer here. It's uh, deactivated. So I'm gonna now activate it. Go to settings and uh, change the brute force again. I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. Sorry for this uh, small window, but fortunately I'm working on a small laptop, so this is, this is how it needs to be. So I'm gonna change this max entries to three, of course, local time. I'm gonna change that to default 15 minutes. Max lockouts, I'm gonna change that to two, and the hours. Course we're gonna change well if you want to actually um, give those crazy bots a lesson you can uh, leave it at this so it depends you know who who will be actually locked out locked out um, if it goes to users they would have a problem then if they don't get locked out for that amount of time but the bots, well, for brute forcing, they should be waiting that kind of time. Okay, uh, so we got Loginizer set up. Uh, next, I'm gonna check what's next on our list. Okay, so um, okay, so I made some uh, notes uh, that I wanted to also come back to for just a brief moment. So uh, this option uh, extend the lockout. Um, you can set it up for twenty four hours or the crazy amount of hours which is going to stop any annoying bots if you by any accident uh, got lock out, locked out you can always disable the plugin from the server again so that's what we did next we had of, of course the blacklisting the IP ranges and whitelisting IP ranges okay so let's go to another plugin that we can utilize which is gonna be called WordFence. Pretty known in the WordPress community, WordFence security, firewall and malware scan. So we're gonna use this one. This is WordFence Word, Word Assistant. And this is the login security. So basically this is like the poor version of uh, this 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 is the full version this is the poor version because it doesn't have the majority that this version has so let's activate word fence and here there is quite a lot of things that i wanted to talk about because there is quite a lot of options you can actually utilize in word fence just uh, when the first screen appears here I would suggest for you to set up your own private uh, email address that is going to be connected to your WordPress and to WordFence and it's going to be dedicated to all the notifications that are going to come from WordFence which are really handy so I would suggest to set it up properly I'm just going to choose something bogus here again Uh, would you also like to join the WordPress security mailing list? Well, if you want to, you can. That's not a problem. I'm gonna accept. Oh, of course, we're gonna skip that because we don't have the premium premium key, and we have WordFence activated. It's here. So let's check the dashboard. I'm gonna turn this off because it's not needed. I'm gonna dismiss this for now. No thanks. 
So as you can see in our word for word fence protection, we have like firewall and scan here in our dashboard. Uh, there's some notifications here about the terms of service that you can read about. If I uh, click here, it will take me to the terms of service. As you can see. Okay, so firewall summary attacked, blocked from attack attacks blocked for, and this is in my uh, server address, of course, where the WordPress is. Uh, so let's maybe start with, of course, our firewall. And dismiss this blocking. So first firewall. Okay, so. Basically, we're gonna go to manage firewall. And here uh, we have uh, three options to choose. We have the enable, enable and protect, protecting. We have disabled, and we have the learning mode. So by default, when you install WordFence, your firewall is on learning mode because it's basically learning everything about your website, what's going on on it, how the, how the traffic is looking, who is logging in, when, what's going on. So it uh, it's learning and what the WordFence guys are actually suggesting, uh, you should leave it for learning mode for seven days. So it can actually learn as much as it can. Of course, if you are installing WordFence because you actually suspect that you were under a um, malicious attack, you had some kind of JavaScript uh, or SQL injection or whatever was something was uh, is bugging your site, and you are suspecting maybe some uh, also hacker activity going on. If you install WordFence, just remember, don't leave it, leave it on learning mode. If you are installing WordFence, uh, just to scan everything, because you already have some kind of malicious stuff going on on your, on your website, disable it, disable it, uh, choose this, uh, because if you leave it on learning mode, it's basically gonna learn all the malicious activity that is going on on your website and this is not the normal activity that your website actually does from day to day it's not what's supposed to happen on a day day to day basis so bear in mind that this learning mode is only for like healthy uh, wordpress installation and uh, healthy Word, wordpress uh, websites so if you're installing it because you suspect that something is going on, disable it and then start your uh, start your work with WordFence and try to determine what's going on. And after you actually dispose of the garbage that is bugging you, then you can go to learning mode. Uh, okay, uh, so let's uh, after this. Uh, Go check real-time IP blocking, that's a premium feature. Now we have advanced firewall options, so let's go here. And what do we have here in advanced firewall options? We have a delay IP and country blocking until after WordPress and plugins have loaded. Okay, so uh, basically I uh, got the terms of service here. Okay, so I'm gonna just close it down. So, delay IP and country blocking. So, basically, if we open it up, what we have here when the WordFence firewall is optimized, the firewall loads before the WordPress environment loads. This is desired behavior as it is necessary, necess increases security and gives the firewall a performance boost. But if your server has a conflict with blocking by IP address country or other advanced blocking settings before WordPress has loaded, you can turn on this option to allow WordPress to load first. 
we do not recommend enabling this option except for testing purposes okay so I would suggest not to enable this option and because it actually uh, allows like it says here the firewall the firewall loads before the WordPress environment loads right so I would leave it as a default so without taking this option okay so what do we have here allow list IP addresses that bypass all rules so of course if you have an FTP server on a different uh, server um, you can of course whitelist it here so that's basically what it is it's a whitelist you can uh, just whitelist some IP addresses ranges uh, like it's shown here you can even whitelist the whole, whole subnet all other specific ranges so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna whitelist my IP address because I don't want any problems happening to me okay it's gonna be this IP address and I think also I'm gonna, I'm gonna add another IP address just in case it's gonna be an IP address of my FTP server which is gonna be located on another Debian server okay so what, what are we gonna do next here so we have uh, allow listed services so these are all the services of course we have immediately block IPs that access these URLs so as you can see you can uh, you have some samples of URLs if you want to ban some kind of URL you can use those samples here banned page dot HTML stuff like that so uh, ignored IP addresses for WordFence web application firewall or art altering uh, ignored IPs must be separated by commas or placed on separate lines so basically you're gonna put here IP addresses that are gonna be that wolf or fence is gonna basically ignore there's gonna not gonna be any alerts from those IP addresses okay so we whitelisted this so we got our rules here so as you can see we have some rules like uh, with SQL injection uh, slider revolution malicious file upload um, local file inclusion so that's why I actually and it's quite there is quite a lot of them if you go through all of those as you can see authentication bypass XSS um, RFD uh, quite a lot of those rules here spam so if uh, I had like uh, if I was working on my previous WordPress that I showed you in the two previous videos that when we were configuring all the stuff probably some rules that are here in the word fence would bite uh, each other uh, well they wouldn't work uh, or coexist let's call it coexist they wouldn't coexist with the, the rules that we made in our configuration files so you might have just a cesspool of everything that's why I wanted to have a new WordPress installation with only plugins because uh, WordFence, WordFence, it's in itself has like quite a lot of those rules. Um, so let's go to now check brute force protection. So I'm not gonna use brute force protection because that's why I installed Loginizer. Of course, if you want to use this feature and not lo use the Loginizer, you can always 
disabled or not even install it you can use the word fence uh, brute force protection we have also here lockout after how many login failures so 20 login failures i even set it up like the highest I, this one b3 lockout after how many forgotten password attempts uh, so forgotten password attempts three as well count failures over what time period uh, four hours amount of time a user is logged out yeah so for users maybe like for 30 minutes but that just my uh, like uh, default setting that i'm setting up here and don't be uh, don't suggest yourself buy it just uh, if you want to use it use it uh, how you how you would set it up that's just uh, what i would actually choose here of course i'm gonna turn it off because i'm using this plugin okay so we are going to uh, additional options now so i'm gonna leave all of this on default i'm not gonna untick anything here what do we have here block ips who send post request with blank user agent and refer i'm not gonna leave i'm gonna leave it as it is and now rate limiting so i wanted to talk about this because this is pretty important actually so let's open rate limiting it's uh, enabled what do we have here uh, how should we treat google's google crawlers okay so google truck uh, so we have uh, like a verified google crawler so will not be rate limited um, anyone claiming to be google will not be rate limited treat google like any other crawler so i'm just gonna leave it on the default here and let's check what we have if uh, anyone anyone's request exceeds and well um, all of those options are basically uh, should be set in a specific way and, uh, leaving leaving this on unlimited and just because you can either throttle throttle it on your, or you can block it um, uh, all of those options have specific settings which you can actually read about uh, of course on the wordfence website i'm gonna save you the headache because i've prepared all of those things in my notes so i'm just gonna go with the de default settings here that you can actually use and these are the, the default settings from wordfence documentation so it's not like i'm choosing something here on my own i'm using the official stuff from the documentation okay so for the first option we're gonna choose 120 20 minutes 120 minutes and it should should be set uh, on throttling okay let's actually see what do we have here so if uh, anyone's request exceeds so this is a global limit on all requests if anyone breaks this limit they will receive the, the word funds http 503 temporary unavailable response status code with a user-friendly explanation if you you have given google bot special treatment using the option above then this limit does not apply to google bot in general general 120 requests per minute is a good global setting which allows even fast but friendly crawlers to uh, access your site without overloading it okay so there there you go next we have if a crawlers page a view views exceeds and here actually we should also set it up for 120 per minute let's see what it says if we detect a visitor is not a human and it, it is a bot 
that is crawling your site and this limit will apply this is very useful uh, useful to limit the amount of traffic bots can generate on your site however some good bots uh, tend to crawl your site quickly so setting this to 120 per minute is a good setting unless you are having problem with bots overloading your site use the throttle option in most cases so we have throttling set up if a crawler crawler's page uh, not found four or four zero four exceeds okay so here we're gonna set it actually to 15 per minute so if you set it to like small amounts of time you will get the um, notification that this is very strict and it may cause false positives but this is what they actually advise to set so either they advise to set it for 15 minutes or 30 minutes doesn't matter either way is very very strict may cause false positives so between uh, 30 and 15 minutes I'm gonna set it to 15 and what do we have here if your site is well configured and designed then you can set this as low as 30 per minute or even 15 15 so they are suggesting here is if your site is well configured if it's not you know what to do if crawler is generating many resources not found 404 responses errors on a well configured website then they are usually not a friendly crawl crawler for example they may be scanning your site for vulnerabilities and you may want to block them setting this to 30 minutes and using the block rather than throttle option is an effective way to block IP addresses that are scanning your site for vulnerabilities so at this moment we can actually set it up for I'm gonna change it set it up for 30 minutes and I'm gonna change it to block okay and if next uh, if a human's um, page uh, views exceeds okay so here what they suggest is 120 per minute says about if we detect a visitor is human then this limit will apply what you said this limit to depend on uh, your website in general we recommend you keep this uh, high especially if you are using a Ajax on your website 120 per minute is a healthy setting unless you have many static pages with no Ajax and are sure that the normal traffic pattern that humans generate on your site is much lower okay so we're gonna use it like this if a human page uh, not found 404 exceeds and here i have like from 30 till 15 minutes again so it's quite restrictive i'm gonna choose 15 per minute if your site is well configured and well designed then you can set this as low as 30 minutes or even 15 okay so maybe I'm gonna leave it at 15 let's check what do we have here uh, so if your site is well configured and well designed then you can set this as low as 30 per minute or even 15 per minute however if your site is not well designed or not well configured then it may during the normal course of operations experience many resource not found okay errors for example if you include many images that do not exist in your site pages then your pages will generate a lot of 404s not found errors on your site those 404s not found errors can cause WordFence to block the visitor who is viewing a page 
if they exceed the limit that you have set okay so this is pretty dangerous actually so you have to um, check it up yourself you know I'm gonna change it for now for 30 minutes okay and last but not least we have how long is an IP address blocked when it breaks a rule what does it mean when it breaks a rule well uh, this setting applies only to the rules that are blocking something so throttling doesn't apply you, we have uh, block here on this rule so this amount of time is gonna apply only to this rule because it's if somebody breaks this rule then he's gonna be blocked okay so how long five minutes this is the default so we're going to leave it at that. Okay, so now we have, of course, uh, allow, allow, wire, allow listed 404 URLs. These URLs, URL patterns, will be excluded from the throttling rules used to limit crawlers. Okay, so you have uh, here like some basic things that are already included like the favicon icon you can see some png apple okay and here we have allow allow listed urls so they are typically added uh, while the firewall is in learning mode so once the learning mode is on, there are going to be some things appearing down here uh, regarding the allow listed URLs. So we just need to leave it as, as it is. Let's just save our settings because we made some changes. Up, okay. So we got all of this. So now let's go to scan. This is another thing that we need to set up okay and what does scan do well first of all we need to start a new scan so we're gonna start a new scan so it's gonna take a moment as you can see it's gonna scan all of those things and then if there is some kind of problem somewhere it's gonna show it's gonna show us what's the what the problem is and we're gonna have to search for it okay So everything is fine. Uh, let's go here, and we have here like a few types of scans: limited scan, standard scan, the one that is uh, on default, high sensitivity scan, and custom scan. We can use the high sensitivity scan. We can go to scan. I'm gonna see once again high sensitivity. Save the changes. Okay, back to scanning, start the new scan, we're going to see if it actually catches something on high sensitivity. Bear in mind that my WordPress here is just um, without any additions, I'm only installing plugins here, I don't have much stuff on this website because this is basically a new installation on Nginx based on Nginx so it might not have that many problems of course in your case it can be very different so well even on, on high high options everything seems fine so okay Right, so we got this setup, 
So let's go once again here. Mm, we got the general options here. So I would leave them as they are. You have, uh, of course, you can untick some stuff if you want to. You can just read about it. Just basic things like you can see just scanning plugins, scanning WP admin, scanning images, binaries, and monitor disk space and stuff like that. Performance options. We have here some performance options. Okay, so performance options. So first of all, we use low resource scanning. It reduces a server load by uh, let's check actually uh, reduces server load by lengthening the scan duration. So uh, basically, what it does, it takes your scan longer, but your server is not stressed out by it. This that's the, that's the basic uh, thing about it, about this setting, what it does. So if you tick this on, the, your scan is gonna take more time, but it's not gonna stress your server that much. Okay, so next we're gonna go to limit the number of issues sent in the scan result email. So if you specify an email, then what things? This is the number of notifications in a file that are going to be sent in one file to you on email as a notification. So let's say we have a file, a log file or something like that, and there's going to be like 1000 uh, notifications in this file. So you can specify how many notifications are going to be sent to you in this file into your email address. Okay, so now we have time limit. Time limit uh, that that I scan can run in seconds. Okay, so leaving this option blank will allow WordFans to use the default limit, which is currently three hours. You can also set a lower limit to keep uh, tighter control of resource usage. So that's how it looks. So if, if you leave it on default, it's going to be for three hours. You can change it to, like, let's say, two hours only, and it's going to be a little bit faster, but because the scan is going to take uh, less, of course. But it's going to take um, more memory. Okay, so how much memory should WordFans request when scanning? So this is the amount of memory, so 256 megabytes are being taken from the memory for the scanning. Well, ma maximum execution time for each scan stage. Uh, so we have it here. You can, of course, uh, downgrade it if you would like to. Some people, I think, reported having some kind of issues here because they uh, didn't have enough memory or something like that. I've read about it on the internet. There was some kind of issue I don't remember right now, to be honest. Uh, but I, I would uh, recommend probably just changing it to a, a lower uh, amount. Uh, okay. If you have any issues, that, that is, of course. Okay, uh, maximum uh, execution time for each scan stage. What do we have here? So if you are having trouble on completing scans, then we suggest that you try several different values. The values you specify here must be 8 or greater. Or one word firms uh, will use its own default values. First, try 30 save and do a scan. If the scan does not complete, then try 15. Save and do a scan again. If it still doesn't complete, try then try 12. If you still cannot get a scan to complete, then there might be another problem or you may have to ask your hosting provider to increase the amount of time 
a web server pr process is allowed to execute. Okay, so that's basically maximum execution time for each scan stage. So I have it set on default for zero. Now you have like 10, 20 or higher is recommended for most servers. So advanced scan options. So we're gonna go here. What we have here exclude files from scan that uh, match uh, these wildcard card patterns one per line. Uh, what does this, what does it mean? What does that actually do? Well, this lets you exclude certain file extensions from your scan. You can use this word fence, uh, this option word fence, word fence option. Uh, so. Um, you can use this if WordFence is getting stuck on large files that you know are not malicious, like certain kinds of uh, backup files. You can use the full path to the file or use a star to match any number of any characters. So, uh, for example, we can actually exclude let's say from WP content uploads we're gonna exclude the uh, J JPEG file right so this entry will only exclude the image JPEG file so this image JPEG file is gonna be excluded from the scan If instead we would uh, insert here something like this, we would insert here w content slash uploads and then the star. The star means everything, so all the files in the uploads folder are gonna be excluded from the scan. Excuse me. So this is probably a nice feature that you can use if you have a large file that you want to scan. Okay, what do we have next? We have like additional uh, scan signatures. We have additional scan signatures. Um, So what do we have here? Scan signatures, let's check. In this section you can add scan signatures. They will be they will then be processed by the scanner during the, the malware checks. This is an advanced feature that can only be used efficiently if you are familiar with the structure and function of malware signatures. Okay, so Basically, if you are familiar with the malware signatures, you can use this function correctly. So, these are some malware signatures that they are, they are suggest suggesting that you can actually put here. So, okay. Uh, next, what we have um, only uh, use only IPv4 to start scans. I'm not gonna take that on maximum number of attempts to uh, resume each scan stage is two. You can change that or disable it if you don't want. Okay, next thing we're gonna go through. So we're gonna save the changes of course here. And we're gonna change to tools. We're gonna disable this. So we have here like uh, live traffic options live traffic options okay uh, so we can uh, use the who is lookup by IP address if we have some kind of IP address popping up in our word and we forward fence we can always use this 
and look at the IP or the domain. Uh, export import options, what do we have here? Export world fence options, so basically we can export everything from world fence that we actually that we have configured or we can import the configuration diagnostics let's check the diagnostics we're gonna go back to live traffic in a moment i'm gonna check the diagnostics Okay, so we can actually check it up. As you can see, my diagnostics show me that everything is okay. If something was fucked, it would be red. So I'm not just gonna open all of them because I can see that everything's fine. Like I said, if you do the diagnostics, you can e either send the report by email address. You can expand all check everything or you can export export let's see how this export actually works and there we have it's on a txt file there we go nicely done so we have just a txt file from our diagnostics so this is how it basically looks uh, live traffic. We go to this live traffic. So uh, live traffic options. Uh, these options let you choose which traffic to log. So um, on default you have security only, which is less because it's only concerning your security. If you change to all traffic, you're gonna log in everything basically. You can, well, we're gonna go back to it in a moment, so... Um, uh, choose which traffic to log and to ignore certain types of visitors based on their level or access, usernames, IP addresses or browser type. If you run a high traffic website where it is not feasible to see your visitors in real time, simply change the traffic login mode to security only. Let's open here and see what we got here. Actually, so traffic login mode. You can choose to log all traffic or only security related traffic on the live traffic page feed. We recommend logging only security related traffic. So this is the recommendation which includes successful logins, login attempts, and various types of blocked requests. As uh, of WordFence 7.2.3, you may see a prompt on the WordFence dashboard suggesting switching to the security-only setting. This is now also the default setting on the new installation of WordFence. If you are using a low-cost hosting plan, that limits the resources you have available. Choosing security only is recommended to reduce the load on your web server. So this is why uh, you should choose the uh, low security, uh, the security only option. So if you still choose uh, to log all traffic, it will allow you to see regular page views and other traffic that is not blocked. And it uh, adds an additional request of each visitor to better distinguish human versus bot traffic. This may improve accuracy if you use rate limiting settings that are different for human and bot visitors. If live traffic has a message starting security related traffic only, at the top of the page, this means that your host or a, a developer on your site has set WordFence to only log security related traffic. Okay, so basically it depends uh, if you want to have an, a very accurate reading of everything that happens on your website. And you want to distinguish uh, the bot activity, you can 
choose the old traffic of course this is gonna expand your lot like quite a lot so bear in mind okay let's go to what we have here don't log assign any users with publishing access okay So let's see what we have. A list of uh, comma separated usernames to ignore. So we can separate by commas usernames that are gonna be ignored. Here a list of commas separate IP addresses to be ignored as well. We can put IP addresses that are gonna be ignored. Uh, browser user agent to ignore. So that we can specify browsers. Amount of live traffic data to store nine number of rows, maximum days to keep live traffic data. So it's uh, set on thirty. So after thirty days, the log is gonna be cleaned. Display live traffic menu option. Okay, I'm gonna check this on. Show advanced filters. We can uh, actually filter by type, username, user ID, Google bot, IP, user agent, referral URL, HTTP response code, firewall response, login, security event. And we can choose dates and we can group by different things here. Okay, so next let's go to, of course, we're gonna, I don't need to actually set it up, so we're gonna just go to login security, I thought there actually is some kind of, oh, there you go, save button, okay, now let's go to login security, this is, uh, well, uh, WordFans 2FA. So WordFence has its two-way two factory authentication as well if you want to use it. I'm not using it because I'm using this two-way uh, factory authentication already. We set it up here, so I'm not going to use that. Let's go to all options. So we are here at all options. What do we have here? Uh, WordFence license. So that's the very basic free license. Can upgrade to premium uh, view customization. Uh, we're gonna save that as well. General word friends options. So where to email alerts. So here you specify your email address where you want to email your alerts. How does word friends get IP addresses? So this is uh, the default detected IP address that I'm uh, connected from to my Word, WordPress at the moment. Um, look up uh, visitor IP locations via WordFence servers. That, let's leave it at that. Hide worth or WordFence WordPress version. We can take this on, although there is plenty of uh, possibilities to check up your WordPress uh, version so uh, disable code execution from uploads yeah we can take this on as well what do we have pause live updates when windows loses focus update interval in seconds too that's okay By bypass the light speed no no abort check uh, um, Gonna take it on. I'm gonna leave it on, on default. Delete word from tables and data on the activation. I'm gonna take this on as well. Okay. 
so what does that mean basically when you when your word friends will be deactivated all the logs file all the log files are going to hell so they're gonna be not only cleaned but basically destroyed so uh, but it also means if you would like to actually in time you would say you would come to a conclusion that you don't want to use word friends and you would ju just would like to scratch it from the WordPress uh, itself, then if you have this option clicked, nothing is going to remain remain after you delete the word fence. Uh, everything, all the data, tables, logs, everything is going to be scratched from your server, so no trash files are going to be here. So you can actually take this uh, option on when you are actually, when, when you actually want to delete word fence. In general so okay what do we have next a dashboard notification options mm, updates needed uh, okay that's fine email alert preferences so this is these are all the preferences regarding emails maximum email alerts to send per hour you can specify it here so this is basically for all the email alerts, activity report, enable email summary once a week, that's fine, list of directories to exclude from a recently modified file list, okay, cache, enable activity report widget on the WordPress dashboard, that's fine, you can have the widget on the dashboard, I don't mind. And the firewall options, basic firewall, firewall options here, so we're gonna skip that. Blocking options, and that's for premium users. Scan options, we're not gonna go through that because we already set it up. Tool options, live traffic options, so, uh, we have set it up as well. So. Import export options, and at the end we have login security options. So let's go to login security options. All right, we got login security options, and this is two factory authentication and settings, right? So basically, these are the options for two factory authentication. So we're gonna leave it at that. So all options is just a summary of everything in general. Okay, so I think we have actually covered everything that was to be covered. There is only help left here. Let's go to the dashboard. Uh, recommended settings change. Oh, no, thanks. I'm good. Manage firewall. Protection login optimize the firewall. So we can go here. What do we have here? Gen Gen X uh, is on default. That's great. Let's go to continue. Installation successful. Close. Thank you. Okay, let's go to firewall once again. Learning mode is on. Rate limiting. Everything is set as it should be. All the rules are set. Okay, so I think that will actually conclude the WordFence plugin overview. Okay, right, so. Okay, oh, well, let's go maybe once more because I remembered something about this traffic, 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 
a lot of traffic. No traffic, traffic club mode. Because I wanted to check in my notes if I actually didn't. Okay, so access. Okay, so maybe I will briefly go with the live traffic option because I didn't specify as much as he did about here. So at the end, I'm just gonna go quickly about it. So the fir this first option, uh, if you don't want administrators and editors to show up in live traffic, keep this option enabled. This is here. So basically, if you want to disable uh, all the administrators and uh, all the editors from the uh, live traffic, so you won't have them specified in all of the logs. Okay, next option, a uh, list of comma separated usernames to ignore. This option allows you to exclude certain uh, logged in users from live traffic. Next option, separated IPs. This option allows you to exclude certain IP addresses such as your own, for example, from live traffic. So you can input here your own IP address to be in, uh, excluded from live, live traffic. Okay, now browser user agent to ignore. This option allows you to exclude certain user agents browsers from live traffic you may use this if you are running external scanners, scanner scanners or other remote services on your site that you do not want to see in the live traffic okay next one amount of live traffic data to store so we have that this option limits the amount of database space that is allowed um, to work work fans live traffic if you are on hosting with limited resources or if you are having issues with a slow database connection then you can lower this value if you are on a high performance site with lots of visitors you could increase it maximum days to keep live traffic data so next one is maximum days to keep like live traffic data along with the number of rows you can also limit live traffic data by the number of days since a visit was logged. And the default is 30 days and the minimum is one day. Limits are checked daily. You, mm, aha, I'm all right, and the records over the limit are removed at the time. Note that you cannot record data from more for more than 30 days okay so 30 days is the limit of recording data so the lowest is one the max is 30 days all right great so i think we actually now we finally covered everything so let's go to plugins again and we're gonna actually install now of course something for our backup right because we need to do backups on our wordpress is very important 